بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعليه وسلم أجمعين ثم ما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so inshallah we will start uh, we'll, um, the new section in the seerah I'm going forward today on the birth of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so in the previous sessions if you recall we talked about the immediate family of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know his grandfather his grandparents so his grandfather Hashim and his grandmother being from Medina um, which we said this meant that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had relatives from Medina also in Mecca. We spoke about that. We also spoke about the parents of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, in the previous sessions. So now we will inshallah be discussing going forward, like we said, the actual birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you just picture um, at the moment, just picture the events, you know what we've talked about in the last um, maybe like a few months just leading up to this point. Just picture the events that we talked about in the seerah. So in the timeline, like where we are in the seerah, if you recall, so the birth of the Prophet وسلم, like we said, it happened about just two months, under two months after the incident of the elephants. And we talked about the incidents on the elephants, the invasion of, by the army of the elephants. So two months after that, the, the Prophet وسلم, is born. So we also spoke about the digging of the well of Zamzam, but this happened many years before the birth of the Prophet وسلم, in fact, before even his father Abdullah was born. So you could say at least 25 years before the birth of the Prophet وسلم, the redigging of the well of Zamzam, which Abdul Muttalib was involved in. So right now we're in Makkah and Amina, the mother of the Prophet وسلم, is expecting the, the messenger of Allah وسلم. and um, like we spoke about, Abdullah, the father of the Prophet وسلم, he has already died, he's already passed away when he was in Medina. So we spoke about that. So the grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdul Muttalib, he's, um, you know, after having a major role to play in the invasion of the elephants and his conversation with Abraha uh, and his dua that he made at the Kaaba, if you remember. So his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, is also, you know, present in Makkah um, at this time. So um, when we talk about the the, uh, the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are two main discussions. Okay, two main discussions, two main two main uh, areas which we talk about. The first one is you know the actual date, the time, you know the circumstances. What was the experience of his mother Amin while giving you know during the pregnancy and whilst giving birth? So that's the first thing. You know the the date of um, his birth. Uh, the time, the experiences of his mother. And inshallah, you know, that's what we will talk about today. And the second discussion, which we'll have going forward, is that some uh, something that is debated between scholars, uh, and there are some uh, narrations, uh, different narrations about this, you know, regards how authentic are the narrations. But the second major uh, conversation is that there are certain narrations which mention that miraculous events took place. Miraculous events took place at the time of the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we'll cover that going forward. So inshallah, uh, we'll start. Was there a question? Uh, I saw a hand raised at all. Okay, if there was a question or not, but otherwise... Okay, that's fine. If there is, I mean, you can type it in the chat or uh, you can just... Uh... Yeah, okay, that's fine. So, the, so what we will talk, be talking about today is... Initially, so firstly, what what you know what was the day that the Prophet وسلم, was born on? What was um the day of his birth? Okay, so that's the first discussion. When we talk about the birth of the Prophet, وسلم, what was the day? You know, the exact day of his birth. So in regards to the day of his birth, what was it? regards to the day of his birth, in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, we just mentioned this, the Prophet وسلم, he was asked by a Bedouin, um, you know, the, the desert Arabs at the time. Is asked by a Bedouin man. The Bedouin man asked him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what do you have to say? What do you advise about fasting on Mondays? So he's asking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Monday, this is the day that I was born. And this, and that was also the day on which the divine revelation arrived to me. You know, the uh, the first revelation. Uh, the first revelation also arrived to me on this day. This was also on a Monday. So from this uh, hadith, we realize that from uh, authentic narrations, we're getting it directly from the Prophet وسلم, that he was born on a Monday. So he was born on a Monday, he's told us that. And even the revelation, the first revelation began on a Monday as well. 
And then there's a famous narration by Imam um, Ahmed in his Musnad as well. It's narrated by Ibn uh, Abbas عن, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was born on a Monday. He was given prophethood on a Monday. The, that day, you know, in the cave, uh, like we said, the cave of Hira, uh, that was also on a Monday. And the hadith continues: the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he left Makkah when you know for the hijrah for the migration when he was going when every all the companions and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And they went from Mecca to Medina. He left Mecca on a Monday. The Prophet ﷺ specifically left Mecca. He departed for Medina uh, in the Hijrah on a Monday. So that was the Great Migration. And he entered Medina on a Monday as well, right? So he entered Medina on a Monday. And the Prophet ﷺ, the Hadith continues, he passed away, he died on a Monday as well. So this all happened on a Monday. And the famous incident that occurred before prophethood, if you... You know, if you're familiar with the seerah, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, when he had the black stone and he he had to put the black stone back into place when the Kaaba was rebuilt um, after there was some damage. That time when he lifted the black stone, he put it into place. What day was that? Monday. Monday, yeah. So you can see in you know, this narration of Imam Ahmed is uh, narrated by him in his Musnad. You see, Monday is a significant day. It's a very important day in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the seerah. So there are other extended narrations as well. Uh, you know, different versions of this narration, but we understand, you know, a lot of things happen on a Monday. And Ibn Ashaqil mentions um, in, a, in his book of history, a historian, the Suratul uh, Ma'idah, you know, Suratul Ma'idah, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent an ayah where he said, uh, translated, that this day I have completed the deen of Islam for you, and, you know, and the blessings of Allah, and I've chosen for you Islam. This is, you know, he mentions this uh, famous ayah. This uh, he mentions this historian that this day was also a Monday. When well, Aspan Tala says, you know, I've completed this uh, the deen for you, this was also on a Monday. So, you know, the the main the conclusion we come to is Monday was a very important day, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was born on a Monday, right? So we know that. Now, as for we know what day it was. Now, what month was it? Next question: What was the month of his birth? So we know that he was born on a Monday, but what was the month of his birth? So. We know, uh, so the vast, overwhelming, the majority of scholars, most of the scholars in narrations in the books of Sirah, in the books of history, in the books of Hadith, say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was born during the Islamic month of Rabi al-Awwal. Rabi al-Awwal. So, and you know, uh, there's almost practically, there's no, there's no um, disagreement. There's agreement by all the scholars that he was born, uh, alayhi salatu wasalam, during the month of Rabi al-Awwal. So there's very there's very small number of scholars, very small minority. You know, they have certain quotations which they say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is born in the month of Ramadan, but there's very little proof of this. There's very little evidence. And um, the most uh, common majority opinion is he was born, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the month of Rabi al-Awwal. Right? So is that clear? So we know what the day of his birth is. We know what the month of his birth is. Next. What is the date, the date of his birth? You know, so we know it's a Monday, Rabi al-Awwal, but what was the date of his birth? Okay, the exact date. Okay, so this is the next thing we'll discuss. So this, it goes on in the discussion as to, you know, when we talk about the date um, the Prophet Sallallahu was born, we know, we know it was a Monday, we know, we know it was Rabi al-Awwal, so here you find different narrations. So we'll just talk about these. There's a narration from uh, Al-Hafiz ibn Dayya, right? That the Prophet sallallahu he was born on the 17th of Rabi al-Awwal. So there's a narration saying this was 17th. And then there's even an opinion by Imam al Imam al Waqidi. He's, he's a um, famous historian, Imam al Waqidi. He says, and even Ibn uh, Abdul Bar. So these are these are you know uh, people who hold the opinion. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was born on the 2nd, on the 2nd of Rabi al-Awwal. So now, you know, we have two different opinions. 17th, could be 17th. It could be the 2nd. There's also a, an opinion of Al-Humaydi. Al-Humaydi is a great scholar. He says the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was born on the 8th of Rabi al-Awwal, right? So that Monday, the Monday of Rabi al-Awwal, it was the 8th. So that's another opinion. So now we have an opinion. We have, it could be the 17th. It could be the 2nd. It could be the 8th. However, uh, and this is um, the opinion which is most common, is that the Prophet ﷺ was born on the 12th, on the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal, which is popularly known, this is widely known, 
as the birth date of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is what Ibn Ibn Ishaq in his Sirah, he mentioned this. This is what Abi Shaiba mentioned, mentions this in his uh, Musannaf. And this is the opinion it also passed down from Jabir Ibn Abbas. Radilan. So there's actually a narration from, from them, from Jabir Ibn uh, Abbas, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was born during the um, year, he was born during the year of the elephant. And we mentioned this. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was born, you know, like we said, 50 to 55 days after the invasion of the elephants and uh, just under two months. So just the, the narration by, um, um, the narration by, from Jabir ibn Abbas says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's born during um, the, the year of the elephant on a Monday on the 12th of the month of Rabi al-Awwal. So he mentions this, he mentions this, Jabir ibn Abbas mentions that it was the 12th of the month of Rabi al-Awwal in the year of the elephants, like we said, he was born in the year of the elephants. And this narration it goes on to say that this was a Monday, this, it was also a Monday on which the Prophet ﷺ was given prophethood. So again, we've got other narrations which uh, back that up, that the day, you know, Ikra bismi rabbika khalaq, the, the revelation started on a Monday. Again, that's um, backed up by this narration. And this narration continues, the Monday was also the day where the Prophet ﷺ was taken on the journey of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, the night journey. That was also a Monday. And Monday was a day in which he migrated to the city of Medina. So again, we've, we've, we've seen that in a different narration as well. And it, it was also a Monday on the day that he passed away. So again, you know, the narration, this is common to the other narrations. So we we understand that Monday is, is um, again, a significant day. So this is the most popular opinion, right? Most popular, the most popular, typically, um, no, well-known opinion, the majority opinion uh, by the scholars is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born on a Monday on what date? The 12th, the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal, during the year of the elephant. Because, you know, understand in the Islamic, um, back, to, back then before Islam, they used to um, talk about years in terms of the events which used to happen. So they, they used to call it the year of the elephants. They didn't have a number. For the year, they just used to say, okay, this was the year of the elephants, Amal Fil. And so the Prophet ﷺ was born in uh, Amal Fil, the 12th of Rabi al the most common uh, opinion. Okay. Okay, is that clear? Is that clear? So, and just uh, just also, just to complete the discussion, what does this this date of 12th of Rabi al in the year of the elephants, what date does it match the English calendar? In terms of the Christian calendar, so we'll just talk about that. Like what month was it in the calendar we we use nowadays? So, in the opinion of some historians, the birth date of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi according to the Christian calendar, according to the um, calendar we use, the Gregorian calendar, was the twenty fifth of April in the year five seventy one. Twenty fifth of April, five seventy one of the Christian era. So that's that's the, um, that's what they think that it's the twenty fifth of April. The year 571. So uh, we've gone through some different opinions, slightly different opinions, um, but the most common, like we said, with scholars is the Prophet ﷺ was born on a Monday, 12th of Rabi al-Awwal, in the Am al-Fil, the year of the elephants, and this coincides with the 25th of April in the year 571. Right? Is that clear? And, you know, by the way, uh, the question is, why are we going through this in, in detail like this? And like we said right at the start, that you know the one the one you love the most famous person the most popular person the one you follow you want to know everything about them right you want to know when they were born you know what date were they born what was the year so that's the case with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we need to we that's why we and we're looking at uh, the events of his life um even his birth date in detail so inshallah that's uh, hope that's clear so with that with having completed the discussion uh, on his um, date of his birth we will just, the other thing we want to discuss today is the experiences of Amina during pregnancy. The experiences of his mother, alayhi salatu wasalam, experience of the mother of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Amina during her pregnancy, because it's quite amazing some of the things which are reported here. So we're just going to talk about some experiences that she had while she was pregnant, carrying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi So we spoke about um, the father of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Abdullah, right? He spoke about his father that he died before he was born and Amina was pregnant. And we know that that's backed up also 
like how can we how do we know is there anything in the quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says which backs up um that um majority view that um the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was born his father had already died yes in a surah in the quran in surah ad-duha ad-duha right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions alam yajizaka yatiman fa'awa alam yajizaka yatiman fa'awa the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentions you know he's telling the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the way you not born an orphan were you not born an orphan and I took care of you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in Surah ad duha So we know, you know, that, that confirms the Prophet ﷺ was born um, an orphan. His, his father had passed away um, when he was born, before, before he was born. So now the mother of the Prophet ﷺ, Amina, she's expecting. And actually, she was, she was very close to a due date. So you know what we understand is when Abdullah died, when the father of the Prophet ﷺ died, Amina was very close to giving birth. Like she was towards the end of her pregnancy. She was very close to the, um, towards the end of her pregnancy. And, you know, uh, we know this is a very blessed birth. Uh, the parents of the Prophet Sallallahu obviously they were married. And, you know, there's a narration um, as well. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions in the narration that he was born in this world through marriage, nikah, not by sin. And actually some scholars say, that the whole family line of the Prophet وسلم, you know, right from the whole lineage we went through, like from Adam all the way down to uh, the Prophet وسلم, every single person, everyone was born through marriage, basically, not sin. So every everyone was born through marriage. This is the blessed family line. Allah SWT has kept this family line pure of the Prophet وسلم. So, um, now there are some narrations. Now, just getting back to just talking about what are the experiences of his mother, Amila, during the pregnancy. There are some narrations to talk about the mother of the Prophet ﷺ, that she had some very interesting experiences leading up to the birth of the Prophet. ﷺ, right? What were these experiences? Firstly, she did not feel any pain. She did not feel any pain. Now, that is quite amazing because anybody will tell you, anyone, any woman who's gone through pregnancy will tell you that's not the case, right? So one such experience was, like I said, the, the mother of the Prophet ﷺ, Amina, she says, she says, from the day that I became pregnant with with him, with the Prophet, with them, um, uh, you know, with him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, until the day I gave birth to him, I never felt any pain. I never felt any pain. This is really amazing. I would never experience any pain. I would never experience any discomfort. There's no trouble. There's no discomfort in the whole of the pregnancy. Nothing. And this is so strange, you know, rare and miraculous because. Like we said, anybody who's had children, they know this is not the norm. It's not the case at all. There's like extreme, there's discomfort, there's unease, there's there's um a lot of difficulty and pain and hardship. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala even mentions this in the in the Quran. You know, when the mother is carrying a child, there's hardship, there's struggles, uh, to to bear the child and give birth to the child. But Amina says, I felt no pain. This was an amazing miracle, and you know, this is a blessing. Like she has the blessed um. The rahmatul rahmatul lil alamin. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the blessed um, child. You know, she's carrying the blessed child, and because of that, she did not feel any pain. And in fact, you know, Amina, she even goes on to say that even when I gave birth to the to him, the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, even when I gave birth to him, she, even then, she says she did not experience any pain. And that's quite amazing. She did not feel any pain during childbirth. So again, you know, I'm sure all um, the mothers can. Uh, imagine this, that this is an absolute miracle that, you know, she did not feel any pain. And this was one of those experiences of the mother of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, miraculous experiences that she talks about. And, you know, we also know, so, you know, uh, the thing is, as we will find out in the seerah, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anybody who's had any interaction with him in terms of looked after him or, you know, were involved in um, uh, caring for him, you know, there would, there would blessings would come their way blessings would come their way and uh, this is just one such example of um, his mother you know receiving some um, miraculous uh, blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay good and so finally one more just talking about one more thing the mother of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the other experience she had she used to see dreams she used to see dreams when she was carrying the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam these are very very interesting and amazing and we we'll just go through you know a couple of these narrations so leading up to the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his mother Amina, she used to see dreams. She used to see dreams. So what were these um what were these dreams? So in a there's actually a narration, a hadith, in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that my mother, 
saw a dream when she's pregnant with me, while she was carrying me, that a nur, a nur, a light, was coming out of her belly, was coming out of her stomach, her womb, uh, her womb. A nur was coming out, right, of her womb, of her stomach, and that nur, that light, was literally lighting up the palaces of Asham. Asham. You know Asham, the palaces of Syria, and Asham. They were being lit up by this light. So his mother is seeing this in a dream that, you know, I have this light coming out and this light is lighting up the palaces of Hashem. It's like an amazing dream. And there are other narrations in which it's mentioned that the mother of the Prophet Sallallahu she would see dreams, right? Other narrations mention it. In her dreams, uh, the narrations mention she is being addressed. Like someone is telling her something. Someone is talking to her. And, um, you know, someone is coming in and talking to her. And the scholars say that, you know, who is talking to her in her dreams? These were the malaika, these were the angels, you know, the angels, even Jibreel, alayhi salam. They were talking to Amina, the mother, and they were telling her. They were telling her, what were they telling her? In one narration, particularly, it mentions, Amina was told in a dream. So this is what someone is telling her in her dream. She's having a dream. She's being told, and this is likely by the um, by the angels, or Jibreel, alayhi salam. She's told, you are carrying the leader of this nation. You are carrying the leader of this ummah. For when he is born, when he arrives on this earth, he's going to be a leader. She's been told that when this child is born, right, you're carrying a leader. And when he is born, I want you to say something. So she's being told in her dream that you're carrying someone really special. You're carrying the leader of your nation. So even during, you know, pregnancy, she's uh, being told this. And she's being told when he is born, I want you only then, only then and only then. I want you to say something. So what 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 does the, um, the angel want her to say? Like from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously. What what should he say when he's born? And this narration goes on. When he's born, you should say, I put him in the protection of the one Allah. That may Allah protect him. And this is what she should say. She needs to say when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is born. She's being told in a dream, say this. I put him in the, protect, in the protection of the one Allah. That may Allah protect him. May Allah protect him from anyone who will be envious or jealous of him, right? And may he be put into the care, into the care of good, righteous, strong, confident people. So she's being told, you know, like, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah say this, make this dua when he's born, may Allah protect him, you know, from uh, from anyone who's envious and jealous, say this, and then also say, may he be put in the care, in the company of good people, righteous people, strong people, confident people. And we should also say, May he be put under the um, care of the slaves of Allah who are leaders. You know, may they care for you. May they care for him, who are confident and strong people. They're leaders of the people. And that may he arrive and may he find a place on this earth. So again, say this, when he's born, say this. May he find a place on this earth without any difficulty or trouble at all. Without any difficulty, without any adversity at all. So it's quite amazing that, you know, the details she's being told. Like, say this, you know, when he's born. So why should, you, why should you say this? The narration goes on. Why should you say this? Because he is a slave of Al-Hamid. Al-Hamid, Al-Hamid we know is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Al-Hamid means the one that is constantly worthy of praise. So the narration says, say this because he is, going to be, he is the slave of Al-Hamid, the one who is constantly worthy of praise. And he is the slave of Al-Majid. Al-Majid, again the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is glorious, and magnificent, right? Two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Hamid, the one who is constantly worthy of praise. And Al-Majid, the one who is constantly glorious and magnificent. So that's why you should make the dua for him. Because he's going to be the slave of Al-Hamid and Al-Majid. And the narration continues. Until he's going to be shown, he's going to witness what he is meant to witness. So what, is, what does that mean? So... Basically, make this dua for him, you know, um, make this dua and people are going to take care of him until what happens? He's going to witness what he's meant to witness. In other words, this is a hint. He's going to witness the truth. He's going to receive prophethood. The Prophet ﷺ is going to receive prophethood. This is a hint basically being given until he witnesses what he's meant to witness. So this is what the narration is saying. So, you know, it's very detailed. And just continuing on in the narration, the, the, the narration continues a sign of his birth. What is going to be a sign of his birth? Like, what what is a sign that he's um, that? What? How will people know? How will um the world know that uh, he he is um something special has happened? He is he is born. What is the sign of his birth? 
A sign of his birth is going to be when he arrives, when he when he arrives on the earth, then along with him, and this is this matches uh, the other narration we went through. A sign of his birth is going to be a nur, a light will come that will literally fill the earth. A nur, a light is going to fill the earth, so much so that the palaces of Hashem are going to be light lit up, enlightened. So again, this you know this matches the other narration. That light is going to um, spread in the whole earth when he's born. And the palaces of Hashem are going to be lit up. And just to um, complete this narration, so again, you know, very detailed. This narration mentions when he is born, when he is born, you should name him, right? This In this narration, Amin is being told. When he is born, to name him Muhammad. Name him Muhammad. So he's being told, give him the name. Give him the name Muhammad. Why? Because his name in the Torah, you know the Torah, uh, the book of the, uh, the the Jewish people, the book of the Jews, his name in the Torah was Ahmed, right? His name was Ahmed, which means Ahmed, the people of the heavens and earth, and the people of the earth praise him. So his name was Ahmed, and his name in the Injil was Ahmed as well. So Injil is the, um, the book of the Christians, is the original Bible. The Torah is the book of the Jews. So again, you know, we know that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's mentioned by name in the Torah and in the um, Injil, in the book of the Jews and the book of the Christians. He was mentioned as Ahmed, Ahmed. And Ahmed is the one, you know, is the one who praises, right? It's the same root letters, Ahmed and Muhammad. Ahmed is the one that praises constantly. Muhammad is the one that is constantly praised. So again, it's, it's the same root. So that's why she's told in the dream, to name him Muhammad, because that's basically um, the name, Ahmed. It's, it's, it's the same name from the root. Ahmed was in the other books. So name him Muhammad. And in this narration, it continues, his name in the Quran, his name in the book that will be revealed to him will be Muhammad. His name in the book that will be revealed to him will be Muhammad. So, you know, subhanAllah, this, um, this narration, um, this narration is also, you know, um, there. And it is very detailed, and it gives a very big hint to the mother, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the, the one she's carrying, right, her child, is truly going to be someone very great. Like, this is not a normal child um, with the dream she's having. You know, this is going to be someone very special. And just look at the detail that she's being, she's being told in the dream about, um, you know, make dua for him, and the fact that he's going to witness what he's meant to witness, and the fact that to, a light is going to emerge, a light is going to spread along the earth, and light of the palaces of Hashem and to even name him Muhammad because his name in the Torah and in the Injil was Ahmed and this is amazing you know to be told this this is like um definitely it's, it's, it's like a this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know this dream so this is um you know very detailed description of the events you know uh, to come um, basically with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the blessing that she is carrying and um, just imagine it from her point of view like we said, uh, you know, she's pregnant. She's 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 having these dreams, so it's she must definitely she knows that she's carrying someone very special. So Subhanallah, it's quite intriguing. So you know, this is so this is pretty much what we wanted to cover today, talking about the day, you know, the day, the month, the date of the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and. The experiences of Amina during her pregnancy. So we said that, you know, she didn't feel any pain and she saw dreams. And these are really uh, amazing, intriguing dreams. So, inshallah, we will uh, go ahead. We will uh, stop there. And next week, inshallah, we'll talk about the actual birth of the Prophet wasallam. So some other events which happened, you know, during the actual birth. And some further amazing narrations that we have. And just continue, inshallah, talking about um, um, the events of the seerah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk